Hi, I'm Joe Hupsey, and I'm here with my colleague Chris Komar. Chris just delivered a paper titled Optimizing Area and Power Using Formal Methods, and the title really just doesn't do the paper justice. I wanted to, Chris, I'm hoping you can elaborate, tell me a little bit more about um, just the problem space you were solving and this very novel application of formal verification technology. Sure. Uh, first off, it's kind of in a space that uh, most people wouldn't even think of considering. It's really a chip level problem. It's a problem that uh, you do run at the chip level and you're trying to see uh, from a low power perspective uh, how can I optimize power by using certain flip-flops in the design. Mm -hmm. And if I can minimize these flip-flops, I really optimize the power and the area as well. And so we're using formal to in that space. That's intriguing. So, yeah, most people think of assertion-based verification and such when they think of formal, but you're really using formal to discriminate between one type of uh, low-power structure or another. How, how does that, can you dig down another level? Sure. It, the, the beauty of this is, and any problem with formal really, is if you can articulate a problem in English, you can pretty much capture that problem in an assertion. Mm -hmm. And once you capture it in an assertion, you can run formal on it. And that's what we were able to do with this problem. We could take it, turn it into an English statement. From that, we can take it and put it in an assertion. And with that, we can target it with formal. Terrific. Now, what were the results then from this process? Again, running at the chip level, most people would think the results would not be good. But quite the obvious opposite. The results were actually quite good. Uh, I think the metrics were about 3,000 assertions for the entire chip. It's basically the unique clock trees in the chip. We have one assertion per clock tree. And for those, I, I think the end results were less than 1%, very small percentage, less than 1% of 1% were explored or unconverged properties, which would be the typical problem where people would think running formal on a large design, it may not work, but it was less, it was a very small percentage that didn't converge. And, you know, within a Within a general brick, you know, how much area and power do you think were saved uh, by using formal in this way? Uh, that's a, a good question. The only thing we can, uh, it's hard to assess. You could assess it against the, really you're comparing it against a simulation-based approach. Mm -hmm. And the simulation-based approach had problems of being very inconclusive. And being inconclusive, you have to be very conservative then in the implementation. And when you do that, you're then, you say, well, I don't know if I can safely use this sort of flop. And therefore, you have to use a conservative flop. And there, your, air, your area and, 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 and power goes up significantly. In this case, with formal, we definitively say, we do not need these extra large flops or extra area flops and, and can just use uh, the smaller one. But formal gives us a conclusive answer. It found every problem that simulation found plus a significant uh, many more. Terrific. And that, that translates to real area savings on the die, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it's a flow that um, now that they've introduced this on their first production design, it's, it's something that they will not live without now. They will not tape out a chip without doing this step, uh, is what I was hearing. Uh, because the area savings, the power savings are just significant that it's, it's just not feasible or you'd be crazy not to, to, to achieve those area and, and power savings. Great. Well, hey, thanks for sharing this very novel application of Formal. Well, thank you.